Hey, it's Leanne from Pure Country sitting down with Mitchell Tenpenny. Thank you so much for taking the time today. Thank you. Now, we're in Toronto because, of course, we have some huge shows with Jason yeah. Aldean lined up for you. How has this tour been going so far? Yeah, it's been absolutely amazing. Um, like I I keep saying this, but it's I'm trying to learn. Like I, I learned a lot from Luke Bryan last year and getting to learn from Jason. Like, how do you keep a team together for 20 years plus years? Yeah, I know. Um, and going with the people that go with you. And it's it's really cool to see like his band stay with him, his crew stay with him. And that's some of the most important information I'm gaining out of here. And so he's super nice, open to talk about anything. And, and I, I really appreciate that type of guidance. Um, but also it's been fun to kind of make, you know, make believers out of these fans. These are Jason Aldean fans. And so, and I know that. And so going into these shows, I'm like, you know, you got to you got to win them over. It has been kind of cool to go back to that grassroots and and have them leave not only Jason Aldean fans but Mitchell yeah, fans that's and the Jason Aldean yeah, fans. That's the goal. Now, I don't know if this is because of Instagram and TikTok over the past couple of years, but as a, a listener and a fan, you keep seeing all these stories about end of tour gifts. Yeah. Um, has that always been a thing or is that just something that we're starting to see more because of social media and the push to, you know, pull the curtain back and share more? Wow. I, I mean, I, I think it's probably always been, it's been a thing since I've been touring. Okay. Um, but I, I don't think we've ever shared anything of ours. I, I feel like that's a personal thing. Are people sharing them all the time? It, it's kind of, it's kind of cool. I mean, I, I'm a huge watch nerd. Luke Bride gave me a beautiful watch. Old Dominion gave me a beautiful watch. Um, I have no idea. I don't expect anything from Jay, like at all from Jay, like anybody. So we'll see. But I, I have. What so much do we have on here? This is a. I mean, this is a. This is a Rolex Submariner. Um, I got this after Drunk Me went number one. So, so that's you. a pretty sweet. Yeah, I, uh, treat I like. Yourself. I like to make them like if I'm gonna buy a watch or something. I want it to remind me of a song or, or a moment in life. I don't want to just like just get something that's meaningless. I, I want to be able to look at it and be like, oh, I remember that. And that's that's when I wear those watches too that they give me. It reminds me of that tour and you know the conversations we had together. So I don't know. The time pieces are always special for me. Now, Jason Aldean, I did some research because people are sharing some of their tour gifts. Yeah. We'd get uh, Thomas Rhett. This was years ago. Okay, yeah. I didn't now, uh, like a, a four wheeler, a UTV. Oh wow. Okay. Um, I know that Jason Aldean performed with Garth Brooks in the past, and Garth got him a Rolex. I've heard. Gar I've seen. I've seen Garth's presence on some people. Yeah, I know he got he got Chris Young one. I know he got the FGL boys like some motorcycles. Yeah, what the yeah heck? you just gotta. Yeah, I seen about <laughs> one show with Garth. Barely Garth just threw an additional round. Yeah. Now speaking of online purchases, you did mention watches, and I know Luke Holmes loves his yeah. watches. Luke Holmes also talks about um, how much he loves Amazon and yeah. buying things on Amazon. What would be in your wish list Amazon shopping cart right now that you haven't bought but want to? Ooh, that I haven't bought but want to. Honestly, I've been looking. I, I watched the Kill Bill movies again the other day, <laughs> and I just want that sword sitting up on my <laughs> yeah, the Kill Bill sword sitting up on my mantle. I think that would be a great dinner piece. Yeah, you can use it. They, they have turkey. Yeah, yeah, sure. I don't even take it out. I just wanted to. Yeah, here's it. I just I, I'm such a knickknack person. I love I love like movie stuff. Yeah, uh, that's been in my card. And I haven't pressed like. By a long time, so yeah. I do it. Uh, speaking of Luke Combs, I did see once you wrap up your tour with Jason Aldean, you've got the massive stadium tour with Luke kicking off in May next year. I'm so That's huge for you. You yeah. got a bed just dreaming about that, sir. <laughs> well, Luke's been a good buddy for a while, and man, he just watching his career and everything that's happened with him, and um. It's it's first off, it's an honor. I love his team, his manager Cappy and Luke, and what they built together. But uh, for Luke to you know give me an opportunity to be out there with him, and he's done this. I've opened up with him a few times on shows, and done a couple stadiums too, which is nuts to me. And his fans really engage, man. It's awesome. We always leave growing, and that's I'm just I'm just so grateful for his opportunity to do that because it's like they trust him so much. Whoever he brings along, they're like. I'll listen. We'll give him a shot. Mm -hmm. And that's everything, man. That's why you take these tours. That's why when you get the opportunity, it's why you do it. And so him giving me that opportunity to kind of, to hopefully bring some of his fans along our journey is, um, yeah, it's, it's very humbling. Luke's what a guy. I mean, he really is a special dude. 
Now, take me back. You said that you've done a couple shows with Luke. You've known him for years. Do you remember the first time you met Luke, where you were, what you were doing? Yeah, I met, I met Luke at a whiskey jam in Nashville, which is kind of like a, I don't know if people know CBGBs back in the day of like punk rock. It was like, it's like the rite of passage. Everyone gets to play um, this whiskey jam. Right? Well, now it's moved downtown, but it used to be at Losers Bar and Grill or at Winners, which is attached to Losers. And uh, it's where everybody local, I mean, everybody and their mother has played there from Chris Stapleton to Luke Holmes to us. I mean, I'm me and Ernest, and he's another artist. We were a duo when we first played that. And it's like, so it, it's a built-in crowd. It's free. So you get real Nashville fans coming in there to see what's on the cusp. Yeah. And so many people have gone through there. And I met him um, one night after he played there. And I mean, you know, nobody knew who he was yet. He was just... You know, did regular live? I wasn't even playing music yet. Like I was still songwriting, doing whatever. This guy was like, "This dude has a great voice," and we were just having a beer. And I met him a long time ago, like that. And it just seems like just skyrocket since then. It's been amazing. That's a fabulous friendship. Now, sitting in front of us, we have your album, "This Move the Heavy," and that album. I was looking at the uh, calendar; is about to turn one. Do you celebrate album anniversaries, album birthdays? Is that a thing? Uh, if someone reminds me, yeah. <laughs> someone had to remind me of me. Yeah, okay. Wow. <laughs> if someone had to remind me of my own birthday the other day. Uh, no, yeah. I mean, I think you should. I think as I get older and, I mean, I got a year coming up on my wife, me and my wife's marriage. Mm -hmm. um, as I get older and hopefully maturing more, you you start to cherish those little things. Like a year, a year, man. I, it's, and I'm, I'm always, my, my younger me is always looking for the next thing. What's next? Instead of like, instead of taking a breath and being like, yeah. Oh yeah, okay. What's next is gonna happen, but like, what what has happened? Mm -hmm. And and like taking a breath. And so yeah, I think we'll, we'll celebrate that for sure. That was this is an album I've been wanting to make for a long, long time. And um, I'm just and I and I've said this before. I just told this. Sony Sony gave me the complete freedom to make that record without hearing the songs. Um, I I made twenty song record, wrote the songs, recorded the songs. And then got them all together, rented out a studio, got them all together to come and listen to it for the first time all the way through. And they had never heard it. And that was the scariest day of my life. It ended up being amazing. But them giving me that trust and respect, I do not take for granted. And so they let me make the record I want to make. So long story. Yes, I'm going to be celebrating. <laughs> now, you didn't mention this is a 20 song album. Absolutely incredible songs on it. And... That seems, that's a big project. Yeah. That sort of seems like it's a new trend in the music world. We've yeah. got double albums. We've got triple albums. Luke Combs had 18 songs. Zach Bryan. Is that the way that things are going? Larger projects with more storytelling? You can yeah, do this I, more? I think, I think we're just, uh, our attention spans have changed mm -hmm. a lot in the, in, in the last few years. I think people love music, and I love being able to put out more songs as a songwriter and an artist. I think they've been fighting for this for 60 years. Mm -hmm. I want to put out more music, more music. And now because of its climate, social media, streaming, and the way people, you know, listen to music now a lot too, um, you, you can you can put out more music. Mm -hmm. And so, um, it, and, and that's awesome. But also there's that scary part of like, put out too much. Some songs might get mm -hmm. lost in the mix if they're too far back. So I wanted to put out 20 songs because I just couldn't choose between 20. I think in the sex record, we might back in back down to like 15 or 14. Mm -hmm. Um but, you know, and like, you know, Morgan put out 70,000, 245 <laughs> songs, I believe. So you can do whatever, you know, there's there's whatever you need. But I think mm -hmm. for me, I want to bring it back down to, because I also don't want to exhaust people. I, I am a record dude. I love violin. Only people. Yeah, exactly. And I, and I want people to listen to it as a as a whole on a project and not just get to song 10 and be like, okay, let me go back. So I want to, uh, I'm really going to try to focus on that on this next record because I do like putting a record out and letting it play. I know that's not the norm anymore, but it's still... It's, it's so it's the best way to spend a weekend. If you Absolutely. Me. One song that definitely didn't get lost in the mix, though, um, we got history. Yeah. You said it just was certified gold. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, they just surprised me um, with a plaque in here when I came to visit here at Sony. And yeah, a couple of songs went platinum and that went gold. And I'm just, I always just blow in my mind. I'm just so grateful for everybody that's listens to the music, listens to country radio, listens to the streams, like every way that they can absorb ours, I'm just so grateful for, and it's just so cool. Mm -hmm. Speaking of big accolades, uh, your wife, Canadian country superstar Megan Patrick, 
Uh, she made her Grimmel Offering debut earlier this year. I saw in the snaps, of course, you were there. Tell me, what was it like to see her living that moment in that bucket list item? It, oh man, I, it makes me want to tear up now. It was truly one of the most amazing um, things I've ever seen. Very humbling, very just to take a deep breath. This is something she's always wanted. Mm -hmm. And having her her dad and her sister and them all there sitting next to them, it was truly one of the greatest gifts I've ever seen, like getting to watch her kill it, smile, just a whole thing come to fruition watching my wife. It was, I mean, it gets emotional. It was amazing. Mm -hmm. The photos, uh, she was yeah. absolutely stunning. Me and her sister just sitting here crying in the pews. She looked gorgeous. She had this blue denim crazy thing going on. It was just awesome. It was so Megan. And it was perfect. And she got a standing ovation. And yeah, she's already played it again. It's it's everything I knew would happen that, you know, she, you know, the, the human in her doubts. And I'm like, well, I knew this was going to happen. And it did. So couldn't be more proud of her. Oh, my gosh. Spouse of the year right here tearing up. You're so free. <laughs> oh, I love it. Uh, speaking of you and Megan. I do have to ask, because I know this weekend might be a little bit uh, rocky for you guys. Week yeah. one of the NFL. Oh, my God, yeah. <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. Uh, I have to say I take Megan's uh, side on this. Y'all, you're in Buffalo. Oh, Bills. Buffalo Bills. Oh, my yeah. gosh. Okay. Well, oops, sorry. This just fell out. <laughs> <laughs> Interview's over. He's so mad at me. <laughs> um, here's the truth. I enjoy the Buffalo Bills. I like Washington. I like Josh Allen. If they're not playing my Titans, I'm okay. okay. I'll root for them. Okay. Um, they are a fun team to watch, and they're a great team. I like I like their football program. I like what they're doing. Mm -hmm. But I'm a Titans fan at heart. So we we got to go to a Titans game where we beat the Bills last year. The Bills beat us. Mm -hmm. So it, it has become a a good rivalry where it's not lopsided on one side. So that we can – but she she does like to I, – I will say I was picking on her when we were winning. She's picking on me last year. It's uh, it's become a really, really fun thing to have around the house. Absolutely. Well, I'm excited for what week is it that the two teams meet? I'm not even sure. I think it's like eight, seven, or eight. I'm not sure. Okay. We're up there. Uh, we're gonna try to make that game in Buffalo because I think that'd be a lot of, a lot of, be a lot of fun. Also, I do have to ask about the the, the football, uh, Super Bowl halftime show. Yeah. Rumors the other week, Taylor Swift <laughs> said no. She said no, right? I heard that. Sorry. Okay. Then we have other artists who are like, I would love to do it. Other artists like Kenny Chesney, who say doing the halftime show is the kiss of death. Where do you sit on that debate? Is it just the kiss of death? Why is it the kiss of death? Is it because people... No matter what... Ears go down after No matter what you do, people are going to critique it. Uh, There's no winning in well, audio. No, I don't know anyone that, that critiqued Bruno Mars. When he did his, that one was flawless. Mm -hmm. If someone critiqued it, I missed it. <laughs> um... I got to go, me and Megan got to go last year and see Rihanna's, and um, I don't know if it captured on television, but what she was doing with those pillows, that was terrifying. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, if, if one, yeah, if one of those things snapped, so the performance in itself, regardless of the singing, um, was just outstanding, the production of it. So I don't know if, they, like I said, the TV captured it. I don't, I, I think if you get the opportunity to do the Super Bowl, you do the Super Bowl. <laughs> I mean, I think, I, I believe you make your own luck. I believe you, you don't worry about everybody saying, I, I, that's, I'm trying to think of something. The weekends was. There was a lot of yeah. behind the scenes stuff, him walking out to yeah, the there was a Yeah, there was a lot of the people there didn't get to see, but I, I'll never forget Bruno Mars. I thought that was one of the most spectacular performances I've ever seen. So last year we had Chris Stapleton do the national anthem and nobody criticized that because yeah. you can't. How, how do you? Is Chris Stapleton. Uh, and of course, country music has had a hell of a year. Every single week, there's some new record that's being set. Country streams are up two or twenty percent from yeah. last year. Um, so I think that this year is the year to do country music. It I mean, makes sense. And probably be a Morgan or a Luke Combs up there. Okay, that was my question. To a joint. You really, you really a little ideal country halftime show. Well, given the climate and where they're at, I mean, they're the two biggest things in country, I think, and they're, they're they're different. They're both very different. I think it'd be cool, honestly, if they both did it and be for country music itself to show that side of country and to show the more, you know, pop rock side of country. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it'd be really cool if uh, Luke and Morgan did it together and then throw in Lady Wilson or something and then yeah. go show that, that, <laughs> that country. Lady, I love her to death. She's a great, great friend. Um, and what she's doing, she's a superstar. To show that uh, bell bottom countryside, put put a put a little triangle, a little tripod out there, then 
And I think I, I don't think anyone talks crap about that. I think I think that wins. Well, Mitchell, thank you so much for taking the time to join us and sit down with us. Sure. Best of luck on the rest of your tours, more albums and songs going gold and platinum and double platinum. Hopefully it's all in the future for you. Thank you so much.